WWE produced a 24 episode on Ric Flair entitled Ric Flair The Final Farewell. And I think the reason they did this was it seems as though they needed content for the network. That's how I noticed when I first saw the commercials because it's a bit strange to just revisit a match from 12 years ago. And especially, you really got a great Ric Flair documentary on ESPN with their 30 for 30, which was absolutely fantastic. So I was a bit surprised they produced this, but we start off with... So they talk about the influence Ric Flair has nowadays, which I'm not sure when that really started. He has a huge influence on hip-hop music. Um, there's so many rappers who use Ric Flair, and you know, he's very you know, marketable. He's limousine riding, uh, jet flying... Getting all the pussy, you know, making money, even though he's blowing it, gambling, and, you know, buying government a drink in the bar. But, you know, he, he's marketable like that. He fits that style, I guess. But with uh, Rick, and he also has big influence on sports teams, on, uh, there's even people in the military. They love the Ric Flair uh, catchphrases. And I don't know when that started, but it must have started several years ago. People just start ever want to be Ric Flair. So they go to WrestleMania 24. And uh, this is, of course, his final match with Shawn Michaels, or sort of. At least his final match in WWE. March of 2008, Ric Flair's career ends. He was inducted to the WWE Hall of Fame and had his final match at WrestleMania. And this is the story of that weekend. It takes us to the title card, Ric Flair, the final farewell. They have a Hall of Fame press conference, and you see Ric Flair in tears. Um, he cried a lot that weekend. Wow. We see Ric... Um, uh, him doing the press conference, he's very emotional. I don't think I've ever seen that. It's strange because I remember watching following along the weekend that year in 2008. And uh, I uh, they have so much footage, it's insane. They even showed it from the Undertaker documentary. The amount of backstage footage, it's <laughs> it's ridiculous. But they're showing Rick talking to Dusty Rhodes um, at the Amway Center where Rick retired. The late uh, American Dream, and of course, Dusty passed away several years after this. You see uh, Ric Flair talking to The Rock backstage, and The Rock did that long speech that night. And that's, of course, uh, when The Rock insulted John Cena. That kind of was a prelude into their match uh, a few years later. You see Triple H and Ric Flair backstage, and uh, Triple H would be the one who inducted Ric into the Hall of Fame. There's a cool moment to show uh, Triple H uh, inducting Ric Flair, and then we go backstage, and guess who we see? We're in gorilla position, we see The Undertaker. Sitting down uh, beside Vince McMahon, uh, and they're uh, watching it. That was actually pretty funny. I guess The Undertaker does that every Hall of Fame. He uh, watches it in Gorilla with Vince. We see more highlights of Rick's career. The gimmick he played in the 80s, and uh, eventually it's leading up to the retirement. They tell the stories. He walks into a nightclub. People notice, uh, notice him. He has to buy everyone there a drink. He always does that. Rick's talking about... Um, with his kids, his relationship was he he always he was always working. He never got to spend much time with them, and that's well known. Uh, we see pictures of him and Ashley at Charlotte, and we saw Sturkey in '93 with the family there. We saw Re Ashley and Reed. Of course, Reed passed away several years ago, but we see the two of them both really young with their dad after he won the belt from Vader. We hear Flair talking late in WCW, um, and uh, this is the late '90s near the end of WCW, and this is where they, they wouldn't use Flair right. They had Eric Bischoff even talk about it. Um, they wanted to get rid of Flair. You know, it was someone who they, people just looked at him, and I remember, you know, Triple H is someone who I remember in, in the late 90s. He would do interviews, radio shows, and he'd uh, mock Ric Flair that he'd still be wrestling at his age, and he's someone who idolized Ric Flair, obviously, but he'd uh, mock him, and there'd be several people in WWE. I think Undertaker even did it too. In which they would uh, look at him, and he would, he'd be kind of a joke, even though, I mean, at his age, there's guys who are older than him now who are wrestling uh, than he was in the late 90s. But that was one of the things was his age, and WCW didn't want to push Flair anymore, and it really had an impact on him. Flair comes back to the WWF, and he has a match with Vince McMahon at the Royal Rumble in 2002. We hear a lot about Ric Flair's self-confidence issues, and they even show him wrestling with Triple H before an episode of Raw. I'm not sure where it was. Uh, but uh, he's having problems with that, and uh, especially the way they use them in WCW kind of lingered on to his WWF run. We get to WrestleMania 18, and he has a match with The Undertaker. It's a no holds barred match, and I think this is where Rick uh, finally got his confidence back because they had a hell of a match up here. Very underrated. Now, WrestleMania 18, everyone knows Rock and Hogan. That kind of overshadows everything else on that card, but, but a few matches before that, Undertaker and Rick Flair had a damn good match. People forget it. 
they go through evolution quickly. We see Randy Orton talking. I don't know if Batista's there, but uh, we see Triple H on this documentary as well. And after evolution was over, he managed Triple H again for a year. Then he was kind of on his own for the last couple of years before the retirement. So it was Vince who called the wreck and told him to end it, end his career. Uh, and Flair did not want to retire, obviously. And he was, they, Triple H even said he would do stuff on his own. That doesn't surprise me. I think he would just do things, whatever he wanted to. I think that was part of the reason they let him go in 2009. Uh, but we get to the Hall of Fame. And we get to WrestleMania 24. His last match is against Sean. I've heard it was going to, I've heard rumors it was supposed to be the year before in Detroit, but I'm not sure if this is true, that he was going to retire in Detroit and go into the Hall of Fame that year and probably face Triple H or Shawn Michaels or one of them. Then uh, what happened was, I think it was Triple H's injury at the Rumble, and I think they had to move Shawn to the main event against Cena, so a lot of stuff happened, but pretty sure I remember hearing that story, but maybe not. But uh, Orlando, that was probably the best retirement of all time. We get to that speech, and it was 12 years ago, it's so, uh, so long ago, but I remember it being really long and being really, really good. He went through his whole career, and uh, he was very emotional throughout that whole thing. That was a great weekend uh, for Rick. Saturday, he went into the Hall of Fame, and then Sunday at WrestleMania 24, he has his final match. He has a great match. He has an amazing retirement. He gets the great send-off, and then uh, the night after is when they honored him. They had the whole locker room honor him at Raw, so it was a great weekend. Rick starts to talk about his children now. This is going to get very emotional when they start to talk about Reed. There's Megan, there's David, there's Reed, and of course Ashley, who's Charlotte. I really like Charlotte here. She's very likable. She's very honest and very raw in her emotions. She's talking mm-hmm. about uh, her father and how much she wanted him to retire. He, she would tell him, you're 60. Retire. Live your life. We see Flair at WrestleMania 24 backstage under the tents. Now we get to WrestleMania 24 from Orlando, Florida in the Citrus Bowl. And this is the first WrestleMania they would do in Orlando. Uh, They've done another one since in that same stadium uh, in Orlando for 33. And actually they've done three if you count this past year's old performance center, not a stadium. But that's technically Orlando. So Orlando, Florida has had three WrestleManias in the last 12 years. That's funny. Uh, But... In this show, they have Rick's final match in the WWE. We see Rick hugging Charles Robinson, the referee, before the match. There's that classic Flair Forever sign, a giant gold sign, probably one of my favorite ones. Giant Woo, woo sign. The, everyone has their own bubble letters of the W and the O's. Flair will never retire. All classic Rick Flair signs. Uh, everyone showed their respect for Rick that night. We see the highlights from the match. Uh, he had Rick doing a crossbody, which was uh, really impressive for his age. The worst spot is Sean doing the, re- the springboard suplex to Rick on the outside. He tries to hit Rick, but he just goes rib first into an out table, and you can hear a crack. That was that just I still cringe when I see that. He must have broken a couple of ribs. That was painful. He does the moonsault onto another one on the outside. Um, they have. Uh, uh, Rick kick out of uh, the sweet chin music and then and they're showing God uh, of how I forgot Sean was going to hit him with the sweet chin music but he can't pull the trigger to end his career and Rick puts him in the figure four instead Rick's hitting him with chops and then Sean hits him with the sweet chin music out of nowhere an incredible ending uh, Sean he after he hit the first one he tells Rick I'm sorry I love you he hits a, another sweet chin music right on the chin one two three and it's a great moment. Uh, Sean kisses Rick on the forehead after it. And Rick, once Rick recovers, he has blood on his lips. Uh, he's in tears. And you have 70,000 people giving him the biggest standing ovation you can ever imagine. After such an iconic career, probably the greatest wrestling career of all time, when you look at his whole history, as, as his whole career, close to 40 years, they chant, woo, it's thank you, Rick. He is in tears and he goes to his family they're all in tears he hugs them he gives them all a kiss and he would walk up the ramp fans wooing uh they're chanting thank you rick again an amazing moment an amazing send-off probably still the best retirement ever so it's it for rick and then they tell him to come back to raw the night after and that his official send-off he had his last match but this was his retirement speech he goes into the hall of fame with sort of a retirement speech there Final match at WrestleMania, and then he has his retirement, and everyone pays tribute. Rick says he had the greatest career in the history of pro wrestling, 
He says, woo, the fans are cheering for him. It looks like that's it. Then all of a sudden, Triple H's music hits. Once Triple H comes out, he thanks Rick. And then they're, after Triple H thanks him, many more would come out. It's like Triple H was hosting it. And Triple H then brings out the four horsemen. They all thank Rick. He had the three of them there. Uh, great moment. And of course, Rick's best friend, him and Arn, uh, they share a big hug, uh, long career with the Horsemen. They bring out Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, probably his greatest rival of all time with all those classic matches. Harley Race they brought out, that was cool uh, when they brought out Harley. They bring out Batista, and he gives Rick a big hug. They bring out John Cena, he comes out, he thanks Rick. Shawn Michaels comes out at the end, he thanks Rick. And then they bring out everyone. They bring out the entire roster. And we see uh, Randy Orton there. You see Undertaker there, actually. I didn't notice him. Uh, he was there. Uh, but you see the whole roster thanking Rick. I think Undertaker, I remember he, uh, he thanked them after the show. They, uh, they showed it after. And um, everyone there uh, pays their respect, the whole roster. Then we see Vince after the show. He thanks Rick. Rick then says it's the greatest moment of his life. He just had an amazing ending. Of course, I hate to mention, yeah, Seed Rooney, he went to TNA, but this was still amazing. Was, the TNA stuff's irrelevant now. This was his final match where most people saw him in WWE. Overall, great documentary. I really enjoyed it. Definitely really enjoyed this uh, 24 special. Even though it did feel a little bit thrown together, if they decided to do it so quickly, I thought it was really well done. I liked the full story of Rick. Uh, his final uh, weekend with the company that he'd be an actor performer and I thought it was really well done and really well produced so uh, I really enjoyed WWE 24 Ric Flair the final farewell